and some good high quality H2O. Welcome girls to this lesson on air pressure. Does my ability to use a straw depend on my ability to suck? Well, no actually, it depends on air pressure. How does it depend on air pressure? Well, believe it or not, it's because the air is pushing down on the surface of the water that I am able to suck the water up through the straw. If there was no air pushing down, then there would be no way that I would be able to pull up the water through the straw. If you've ever washed the dishes before, then more than likely you've played around with the cup under the water. You know, you take the cup, you submerge it totally under the water and then you flip it upside down, kind of like in this clip. Well, if there were no air pressure, that wouldn't be possible. So exactly how much air pressure is there surrounding us? Well, the first person to measure that was Evangelista Torricelli. He used the very first mercury barometer to measure the atmospheric pressure at the Earth's surface at sea level. Evangelista Torricelli did an experiment similar to what children like to do with the cup under the water. But instead of using water and a cup, he used a long tube and mercury. He submerged the tube under mercury and then turned it upside down. And he saw that it went only up a certain amount. In particular, it only rose to 760 millimeters. It didn't go any higher or fall out because there was pressure pushing down on the surface of the mercury, as you see in this diagram here, that then held up the mercury in the tube. Based on the density of mercury and gravity, he was able to calculate how much air pressure was pushing down on the surface of the mercury in order to hold it up. He calculated the amount of air pressure using the formula P equals rho GH because he correctly reasoned that the amount of pressure that the mercury had acting downwards was equal to the amount of air pressure that was holding it up. So he calculated the air pressure using the density of mercury which is 13,600 kilograms per cubic meter multiplied times gravity which is 9.81 times the height of the mercury which was 0.76 meters. Using those values, he got approximately 101,396 pascals. But for short, we just say 100,000 pascals. Air pressure can also be measured in other units. For example, we say that air pressure is simply one atmosphere, which is equivalent to 1,000 millibars, which is also equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury. All of those are equivalent to the same atmospheric pressure. It is important to note that all of those, however, are standard values at sea level. Air pressure varies depending on the weather, and in particular, it depends on your altitude. The higher you go, then the less the air pressure becomes, and the lower you go, then the more the air pressure becomes. In other words, it's an inverse relationship. Now, Evangelista Torricelli used mercury instead of penal water because mercury is about 13.6 times as dense as water. If he had used water, then the column of water in the tube would have been very high. In fact, 13.6 times higher. So instead of 0.76 meters, it would have been about 13.88 meters, which is roughly about 32 feet. This means that you can take a straw that is about 32 feet tall and suck water from the bottom all the way up to the top. To demonstrate how water can be sucked up that high, let's take a look at this clip where we see a past SCA student sucking water up to the second floor of the science building. Air pressure can be applied to many everyday situations. One such situation is how you can use it to separate egg yolks from egg whites. Let's take a look at this clip to show exactly what I mean. 
Let me show you how to separate the egg yolk from the whites using some science. Now, using a water bottle. If you squeeze some of the air out of the water bottle and seal this end over the yolk like this, you reduce the air pressure and you allow the outside air to push it up into the bottle like that. Look at that. There's number one. Here's number two. Look at that. So now you can do whatever you want with the egg whites. Now we come to a YouTube manometer. Not that type of YouTube, but this type of YouTube. So a YouTube manometer is another device that can be used to measure air pressure. It is similar to a barometer. The only difference is its shape. It can be used to measure air pressure by finding the difference between atmospheric pressure and the pressure of a particular gas that you want to find the pressure of. If we look at this picture, we see that if the two levels of mercury in the YouTube barometer are the same, then that means that the air pressure is equal to the gas pressure that you are trying to measure. On the other hand, if the air pressure is lower on the side open to the atmosphere, then that means that the gas pressure is less than the air pressure because it is able to push down on that side that is open to the atmosphere more than the gas pressure is able to push on the mercury. And the opposite is true if the mercury rises up higher on the side that is open to the atmosphere because then the gas pressure is able to exert a force greater on that side therefore pushing it further up on the side that is open to the atmosphere. Let's move over to Mr. Physics now where he'll explain some examples using the YouTube manometer. Hey, thank you Mr. Physics for including me in this video once again. I noticed you skipped me on the last one, but that's okay. Alright, so let's say we have a gas container which is fitted with an open-end manometer. The level of the manometer is 30 millimeters higher on the open side. Using a laboratory barometer, you find that the atmospheric pressure is 750 millimeters of mercury. What is the pressure in atmospheres of the gas in the container and what is the pressure in kilopascals? So, Recall that atmospheric pressure varies from day to day. So on this particular day, it's not 760 millimeters of mercury. It's 750 millimeters of mercury. It's lower than normal. Here, the pressure of the gas will be equal to the pressure of the atmosphere plus the pressure of the liquid that is represented by the difference in height. How do we know that the pressure of the gas is greater than the pressure of the atmosphere? Well, that's because it is able to push down and push up on the other side that is open to the atmosphere. It exerts a greater force, in other words. So, the pressure of the gas in atmospheres will be equal to 1 atmosphere plus 30 over 750. By 30 over 750, well, we have to find out what the excess pressure is, the difference in gas pressure represented by that column of mercury. To do that, we set up a ratio. We know that one atmosphere is 750 millimeters of mercury on this particular day. So how many atmospheres will be equal to that 30 millimeters of mercury? We simply cross multiply and divide and we end up with 0.04 atmospheres. So it's only 4% of normal atmospheric pressure on that day. So 1 plus 0 0.04 gives us 1.04 atmospheres. It is only 0.04 greater than the atmospheric pressure. How about in kilopascals? Well, we do the similar working. We know that one atmosphere is equal to 100 kilopascals. Remember that atmospheric pressure is 100,000 pascals, but kilo means 1,000. So if we divide that by 1,000, we get 100 kilopascals. 1.0 atmospheres will be equal to x kilopascals. So we cross multiply and divide, and we get that it is 104 kilopascals. And that is all for today.